Hi, I'm Misha Perlman. I'm a music journalist um, and I write for places like Kerrang! and New York Observer. I never wanted to get into it, if I'm honest. Really? Yeah, really. I, I just, I was at university at UEA and I started, I started writing music reviews. And then I thought, oh, this could be kind of cool for the student paper. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. You know, I get to like get a free CD, because back in those days you got a lot of free CDs. And you get to write, you know, 100, 200 words about it and then, and then get to keep it afterwards. And you, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't really think about it as a job. And then university finished, I became music editor, and I was like, what else do I do? I'll just try and be a music journalist, and, and, and that was literally it. So I wrote for two years for the paper, and then I was about to quit actually, because they kept like saying, hey, write 400 words on this, and edit it down to 200. And like, I'm quite precious about my words, obviously, because, well, you should be if you're a writer, right? <laughs> and so they edited it down to like 200, it would sound awful, so I was like, forget, I'm not gonna do it anymore came up to move into my third year place and well, my second year place actually sorry I lied and, and I bumped into the, the music editor and he was like oh, are you going to write for us next year I was like well maybe and he said like, well you should because I'm leaving and we need a new music editor and I think you should be the one so I was like all right so I kept writing and writing and writing for her <laughs> lo and behold at the end of the year I was the, the new music editor that's a really difficult one um I think my first break was getting onto the rock sound roster, freelancing for them. I'd written for the Fly for ages, but the Fly didn't pay. <laughs> um, and rock sound. This is after about like a year of pestering. I, I met the editor once, and he was really sweet. And I was pestering, and pestering, and pestering. And I finally got like a review. Um, and you know, they, 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 they paid, but they didn't pay very much. Um, but that was kind of my first big break, I guess. Um, it really came with Kerrang! a few years later. Um, when I'd been on tour with Taking Back Sunday, and my chemical romance, I was driving the support band around, selling merch for them, and then having a wild time, and making this zine about the whole thing, and it was great. Um, and there was a girl who worked at Victory Records, who TBS was signed to. And so I kept in touch with her, we were like really good friends. She worked at Victory Records in the London office. So she took me to a gig one night that, do you remember Aiden? Yeah. Aiden, Aiden, <laughs> a Aiden were playing and we went there and Paul Brannigan, who was then the editor of Kerrang! was there. And she like pointed me, basically just shoved me in his direction and said, go, go talk to him, he's the editor of Kerrang! And so I was quite drunk. It was a free show, we were free, free beer anyway. And I went over to him and said, hey, you don't know me, but I want to write for you and rah, 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 rah. And so he like said, okay, cool, send me some stuff. And I did, and he was like, yeah, this is great. I'll get you on board. And it took about a year after that before I ever got onto their books. So it was a long time. And then I did, and I mean, like, Kerrang's been like my, my solid foundation for a long time, to be honest. I mean, I left for a while, but I come back in it. <laughs> so I interviewed this band, Communique in Norwich. Were you at the gig maybe? It was in... It was Sugar Cult. Oh, it was in Waterfront. At, at Waterfront. Yeah, I guess Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so Sugar Cult played the Waterfront and this band called Communique supported. And I, I got sent their CD by this PR or whatever and I really liked it. So I interviewed them on the day and basically they wrote to me like months later saying, hey, we're going to be touring with TBS and my chem. Can you like spare two weeks of your life to come and drive us around, sell merch and do whatever. And I was like, damn right I can. And I actually quit, I was working at Vodafone in Norwich, hated it. So I quit my job, just went on the way for two weeks. Um, but you know, now I, like, I know Adam really well now and stuff from Taking Back Sunday and it's, you know, that's really formed a, a central kind of core of, of my experiences, even though it's such a short thing. Um, yeah, it was great. Honestly, just tenacity. <laughs> like, just I remember like trying to write for The Fly initially, and it was a the, the live editor was a guy called Andy Ingalls, who for a while was at the Luminaire afterwards, is booking stuff there. And I remember writing to him, and he got back to me, and he was like, you know, just just be tenacious, don't give up, because there's plenty of people who want to do what you do, and they stop and they never do it. So just don't give up. And I kind of took that to heed, and that's what I still do now. I still don't give up, and it's still, you know, a bloody struggle. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I just kept doing that and I had moved to London and I got a job at a printer's and I was freelancing in my spare time. And then a freelancer for Kerrang, who I'd met somehow, I don't really remember how I met her, probably at a gig or something. She told me that there was a job, she worked like doing social media, not social media, like radio or something or other for Heat Radio. And she said, oh, there's a freelancer going in like the office. Do you want to do it? And I kind of went in and it was a really terribly boring thing about archiving reviews for Q magazine. It was, t it was terrible. It was a project that never got off the ground. Like they were meant to basically put all these reviews from Q for the last like 20 years onto a website. It never happened. But you know, I was getting paid a daily rate, which is nice. Um, and I was three floors down from the Kerrang office, from the Q office, from the Mojo office. So I got to know those people really well. And even though I was already a freelancer for Kerrang, just knowing these people, like their faces and who they actually were, that made all the difference. So then, it's nepotism, honestly. <laughs> I, I know I shouldn't probably say that, but it, it's as much as who, who you know, is how good you are. And if you have those connections, it's a lot easier. As long as you pay it back, or pay it forward, I guess, then it's fine. You know, but, it's difficult, because I, I, I want to believe it's a meritocracy, but it, it often isn't. I think mean, there is, some of it is, but some of it really is. <laughs> that's the best thing. I mean, I've made so many great friends doing this. You don't do it for the money, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I've had some amazing experiences. I've met like many of my idols. I just think the, the variety as well of what you do because you know I could go from one day like going on tour with a band for a couple of days. I went on tour with Slaves recently um, and that was amazing and I never met them before and they were the nicest nicest guys and I basically did three days in America with them and it was just like it was phenomenal um, and you know interviewing I remember I first met like Brian Molko in like 2000 and I was still a student in like 2003 and interviewed him face to face and I was like oh, this is great you know, um, and just having, you know, those connections, becoming, you, you've seen um, Almost Famous, right? You know, don't become friends with the band. It's kind of not really true, because at least at the level that I work on, which is up and coming bands and bands that aren't necessarily going to be on the front pages of Q or The Enemy or whatever, like they just, they are starving for attention. They want to do well, then it's really, really hard. So of course you become friends with them, like, you know, and it's, it's great. Um, I nearly had a punch up with Anton Newcomb once. <laughs> he um, didn't like me very much. I think he didn't like anybody to be honest. And, and I'd seen Dig like a couple of days before the interview, I was very wary of how violent he can get. And I was just trying to placate him and, and, and be nice. And he didn't seem to like that. And in the end, he like, basically started insulting me, telling me that his five-year-old kid was more intelligent than I was and that my parents must have paid for me to go to university because I couldn't have, you know, I wasn't clever enough to go to university. Um, and he said that he'd rather be fucking his wife than talking to me. <laughs> so that, that wasn't, yeah. Um, and beyond that, just the struggle of it, you know, because I love it, but it's, it's a hard living and it's getting harder. Unless you're a staff writer, unless you're employed by someone like one of nine to five basis or whatever. It's really, really tough, but it's worth it. Just. <laughs> do you want the honest answer or do you want the... Um, okay, honest answer, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's not entirely honest. No, I, I love what I do, but it, it, is, a, it is a struggle. Um, so be prepared to, you know, work other stuff, do copywriting or do new shifts or do something that kind of pays the bills in addition to like going out into being bands. Um, and be tenacious because you know a lot of people want to do it and, and magazines only have a set like page count, a set budget and both of those things are getting smaller and smaller as, as years go on. Um, and just don't don't pander to tastes. Don't don't think oh because this band is in they're good. Be original, be cool, write about the stuff you want to write about. I think the most important thing for me writing about music is it's trying to extract something else from that music that you don't get otherwise. So it's searching deep into it to find something that actually kind of adds to their conversation rather than just reports about it. It's a subtle difference, but I think it makes all the difference. Uh, I have a portfolio online, MishaPerlman.com. 
Uh, <laughs> and I guess in Kerrang and places, a noise, if I'm not for noise, you can just like, you know, see it on there.